In the past several videos, we've spoken about profiles as a way of altering the behavior of a build. So far, these profiles have been included as part of the POM. This allows any developer to use them as needed. We've also shown all artifacts as downloadable from Maven Central. Both of these assumptions are normal, however, they are not universal. We're going to use Sample Project 7 repositories for this exercise. This project runs the Echo program. However, it does not build it. Rather, it uses it as a dependency. But while the program we built earlier was version 1.0, this one is version 1.1. Let's run it as before. MVN integration test. That fails when it tries to load the artifact because the 1.1 version is neither in our local repository nor Maven Central. The local repository is a cache. It sits on the user's computer and is populated with artifacts either created locally or downloaded from a remote repository. The remote repository in our example so far has always been Maven Central, but Maven Central is exclusively for the use of open source artifacts. When we do commercial development, we still need a way to publish our artifacts so that others in the organization can find them, and for that we use a private release repository. The private repository contains both artifacts released internally and also those downloaded from Maven Central. That is, it acts as a proxy cache, thus minimizing the number of requests made across the internet and speeding up downloading within the organization. There are a number of products which support such repositories. We'll see one of them in section 6. Both Maven Central and private release repositories follow an important rule. Deployments are permanent. This means that any project can count on a particular version of an artifact always being available once released, and never changing. This is essential for build reproducibility. But at the same time, it means that we need a different way to try releases before publishing them, and for this reason many companies also set up a staging repository. Publishing to a staging repository means that other developers can access the artifacts to try them, but they're not permanent. Again, we'll discuss that further in Section 6. But how do we tell Maven to use an alternative remote repository? We do it by using a repository section. But repositories are generally not project-specific, and therefore we don't want to specify them in a POM. Instead, we tie the use of specific repositories to the developer's computer in settings.xml. We mentioned the settings XML file back in section 1 when discussing proxies. To review, it sits in the .m2 directory in the user's home directory, which is found at percent user profile percent backslash .m2 on Windows and tilde slash .m2 on Mac and Linux. The Echo 1.1 program is in a simple repository host of this course at GitHub, so we need to specify it. But we don't want Maven to look there all the time. To make this work, we'll create a profile in the settings XML file. We'll give this the ID Use Course Staging. Inside that, we'll create a repository section with a single entry. We'll specify an ID and convenient name for the repository, and most importantly, we'll specify the URL that Maven should use when trying to find artifacts in this repository. Now, when this profile is enabled, Maven will look here first and fall back to Maven Central for anything it cannot find. And that still doesn't work, because the profile isn't active. We can activate profiles in Settings XML in almost exactly the same way we would in a POM. Since we're using it to verify staged artifacts, we'll just specify it on our command line. If we run again with the repository profile enabled, the program runs fine and we can see that the artifact was downloaded from the demo repository. Note that when working against a staging repository, it's a good practice to delete the artifact from your local repository once you're done testing. That way, you'll be sure to get the released version of the artifact when it's available. We've now discussed ways of affecting a Maven build through the use of properties and profiles. In the next section, we'll move on to documenting projects through generated websites.